Hey guys, and welcome back to the official Sourcing with Kian YouTube channel. So you've heard about purchasing cheaper products on 1688.com, and now you're wondering, should I be buying from 1688 rather than Alibaba? Well, this is the video for you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kian Gozari and I've been living and working in China for the past 10 years. In that time, I've manufactured over 2,500 products, visited more than 500 factories and attended more than 20 Canton fairs. That has led me to working with brands such as the NBA and the Olympics, as well as helping Amazon private label sellers as well. Now, the purpose of this channel is to teach you how to master the art of sourcing products from China. So if you want to see more videos like this, Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and if you're feeling extra gen generous, hit the like button for me real quick and if you do hit the like button, that will bring you extra special good luck for the next five years, guaranteed. So 1688 in Chinese is literally pronounced Yi Liu Ba Ba and number six is associated with happiness and good for business and number eight is associated with uh, good fortune and wealth. And so number six and number eight are probably the luckiest numbers in China. And if you've ever been to China before, you'll see a lot of the car license plates have the number six and eight uh, on the back quite a lot. Now on the flip side, number four is actually the unluckiest number in China because the word four actually sounds like the word death. And uh, as it happens, when I lived in Shanghai, my apartment was on the fourth floor because the rent was a lot cheaper as no one wanted to live on the fourth floor. True story. Anyway, I digress. So 1688 is essentially the domestic version, the Chinese version of Alibaba. Now consider Alibaba is for exporting Chinese goods to the rest of the world and 1688 is just for the domestic retailers and wholesalers in China who want to buy uh, from Chinese factories. Now China has over a billion people in their country, so of course they also need their own platform. And as it happens, 1688 is also owned by the Alibaba Group, which was founded by Jack Ma. So I wanted to make this video for you guys today because I've seen a lot of people talking about 1688 and going to 1688.com to get cheaper prices or you should be buying from 1688 to find the best direct manufacturers and I had to do my own research and I wanted to check it out for myself so I went and did that and you know looking on YouTube there are a lot of people talking about how to buy from 1688 but not many of them actually go into the flaws and why you shouldn't buy from 1688. So once I did my own research, I actually noticed there was quite a lot of things that we need to be aware of before making purchases because the cheapest price isn't always the best thing when purchasing products from China. A lot of problems can occur as a result of that. So I want to make this video for you guys to give you my top seven tips on how to purchase in the best way possible and the things to avoid if you want to use 1688. Now, please watch all the way to the end because at the end of this video, I am going to give you a live demo on how to use the platform, what to look out for. And if you have used 1688 before and you have had a positive or a negative experience, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear about your experience, whether it's been a good or a bad one because I've heard very, very mixed things. So let's get into it. Here are the top seven things you need to be aware of before using 1688. Okay, so number one thing to be aware of is the language barrier. Now, this is a domestic website for Chinese users, so everything is in Chinese. And to understand what's on the website, you have to use Google Translate. Now, there is actually a Google ban in China, so for Google Chrome users, you may face some issues. And the other thing to be mindful of is it's hard enough to you know, deal with Alibaba suppliers who are supposed to know English, and now you're dealing with suppliers who don't even speak English. Then the final thing is that not all the information is easily translatable from Chinese into English. Let's say you're purchasing an outdoor camping chair and you want to know about the thickness of the steel on the camping chair. That is not easily transferable if you just translate it from Chinese into English to understand fully the specs of what you're purchasing. Now, the number two thing to be mindful of is the quality standards. Now, we have high quality standards in the US and the EU if you're importing products into this market. However, on on 1688 they're only focused on the Chinese domestic market and in China they don't have the same standards that we have in the US and Europe so yes you might see a product which is cheaper on 1688 but it will not comply to the same standards that we need in our market and when you browse the 1688 website you won't see any of the certificates that you require for importing these products into the EU or the US and all that's going to happen is that yes it might be a cheaper product but it's cheaper because it's using inferior materials and then hence you're going to get um, negative reviews, you're going to get returns that you have to deal with and then you're going to actually have to find a new supplier and go through this whole process again. 
Now, think of an example like uh, an iPhone cable. If you are in the US and you buy an iPhone cable from, let's say, uh, Best Buy, it's gonna feel nice, it's gonna have like good packaging, it's gonna feel like firm in your hand, the cable's gonna be smooth, you're gonna plug it in, it's gonna be rigid, it works. Now, if you've ever been to China before, you can buy iPhone cables just basically on the street in these little stalls, uh, or even from a store as well, but it feels flimsy, it feels cheap, the coating around the wiring is quite loose, it will come off quite easily and reveal all the sort of wire cables underneath. Um, the sort of metal that you plug in is quite flimsy, it just doesn't feel right. Now, on an image on a 1688 listing, it'll be absolutely fine, but you can't tell by the image the actual quality when you feel the product in your hand. So the quality standards is something very, very important that you need to be mindful of before purchasing from 1688. And point number three is the export license. Now, legally to export products out of China to another part of the world, you have to have an export license, which 1688 suppliers don't have because they've never needed it. Now, in order for you to purchase products from a company which does have an export license, you have to pay for your products uh, either through a sourcing agent or from a trading company. Now you're actually paying a margin to a middleman which has not got any involvement in this process but just to export your goods. So now you're actually increasing your price as a result of it. You're also now paying a company that you don't know in order to buy from a factory that doesn't speak English. Now this is just a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> and you know, do you even have a, a sourcing agent that you trust who can do something like this for you or do you have to go out and find that person? Now if you wanna know more about sourcing agents, I have made a couple of videos, one on the pros and cons of using sourcing agents and the other one about the top questions you need to be asking your sourcing agent. So I will link that playlist uh, up above here and definitely check that out before making the decision uh, to pay through a sourcing agent. Now, point number four to be mindful of are the payments. Now, if you're ever buying a product through alibaba.com, well, you can get payment protection using the trade assurance feature. Now, on and that will protect you against your order. So if anything goes wrong, if you receive anything that you weren't supposed to, Alibaba will re refund you that money. Now, if you purchase through 1688, there is no payment protection. And also you have to pay through a sourcing agent or a trading company uh, in order to even get your order because of the export license. Now, what's to say that sourcing agent doesn't just take the money from your order and run away? So the other alternative is to pay using a Chinese bank account. Now to open a Chinese bank account, you have to be physically present in China. And if you're in China, then you might as well just visit the factory directly anyway. And once you're in the factory, you can negotiate the best price, you can learn how your products are made, and you can build that relationship with the manufacturer. All things that you can't really be doing on 1688. Guys, please do me a big favor, and if you are getting value from this video, please smash that like button for me down below. And if you are on social media, please connect with me on these channels uh, below. You can just read them here and type them in, or all the links will be down in the description below, and plus some other goodies for you, some discounts on some stuff in the description, so definitely check that out. Now, let's get on to point number five. Now, point number five is all about the relationship. Now, if you've ever heard any of my content before, you know how much I preach the importance of the relationship that you have with your manufacturer and with the factory boss or with the decision maker in the factory because a good relationship leads to better prices, better credit terms, uh, faster lead times, introduction to new products, all that sort of cool stuff. Now, how can you build a relationship with a manufacturer on 1688, which is only focused on their domestic market and doesn't even speak English? Now, what if you have a problem with your goods? What if your goods are delayed or there's an error in your stock? Can you pick up the phone and speak to a 1688 supplier and someone who doesn't necessarily speak English? I don't think so. You have to rely on Google Translate and you really want to be you know, typing out your feelings, uh, translating it with Google Translate and then sending it to rectify your $50,000 order. Not a good situation. Okay, so point number six is the price. Now, if you're on 1688.com, it's probably because you've been told to go there and get a better price. But that better price, first of all, might not even happen. And second of all, if it does, it doesn't come without a headache. Now you have to purchase a product which doesn't comply with your standards, the factory boss doesn't speak English, you have to buy through a middleman, and you don't even get payment protection on your order. Now, you're perfectly capable of buying from a good price on Alibaba, but if you're not, it means you have to level up your negotiation skills. So if you like, I'll make a video all about how to get the best price on Alibaba, all the tactics you need to apply in order to get the best price on that platform. So if you want to see that video when it becomes available, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and tap the bell, ding ding, uh, to turn on post notifications so you can be made aware when that video becomes available. So point number seven, what is it that 1688 gives you that Alibaba doesn't? 
it's the same company. So as I said, like sometimes you get attracted to 1688 because you think there's a better price, but as we know, that's not always the case. You might not get the better price. And also you don't get payment protection. You can't pay the factory directly. Uh, they don't even speak English. There's all sorts, of, all sorts of problems. Now, buying from China can be complicated enough, whether you're going to China directly, going to the Canton Fair, going to the factories, or even buying through Alibaba. They all have their own challenges and limitations. Now, for me, I'm like, why do you want to add all of these additional headaches on top of that, you know, to, to me it just doesn't make any sense. And if you're skilled in negotiation and, you're, and you have experience buying from China, well you can still get very very good prices and you can still get the best prices from Alibaba suppliers. But the problem is, there are middlemen that exist on the Alibaba platform and those middlemen are not factories, they just want to get your order and add a margin. And what they do is they get your order on Alibaba, then they go and find a factory on 1688 in China to get them to manufacture your goods and then they just sell that to you. And that's why people get attracted to 1688 because they want to avoid that middleman. However, if you just order from Alibaba correctly, you never have to go through that process. And for those of you who don't know, I've made a video all about the top seven, top seven <laughs> sourcing hacks in order for you to bypass these terrible suppliers and work with the best direct supplier for your business. Now that video I'd highly recommend watching if you haven't seen that already because that will link you with the best manufacturers for your business. I'm going to link that video up above here and that video is also going to play at the end of this one too. So guys that's it, that's the top 7 points and what I wanted to know from you guys now is in the comments below if you could just tell me what has been your experience on 1688, if you, has, if you have used it, has it been a positive experience, has it been a negative experience after watching this, do you still want to use it but you're just going to be a lot more careful and just to demonstrate some of the points that I just mentioned uh, above, I'm going to jump into the, uh, the screen share, the live demo. Let's grab the laptops. So let's jump into 1688 and let's see what it has to offer. Right, guys, here we go. Quick little demo. Let's check out 1688.com and see what comes up. So, as I said, the website is in Chinese. It's a Chinese site for Chinese people. So, everything is in Chinese and the local currency is RMB. So, very, very hard to read. Now, Google automatically offers us to translate into English, this is great, but the problem is that now this middle bit is going to be com being completely blocked off. So what do we do here? We can't get access to that, we can only go down the side. One thing I did notice is that we want to use the search bar which has been lost, but if you scroll down then the search bar appears. Now you can use Safari, uh, which is here, go to 1688.com on Safari and it works fine. However, I didn't see the translate option into English. So if anyone knows how to translate a Safari page, then great, use that. If not, just go to Google Chrome. And so let's say we are looking for a sport water bottle, right? You can type it in in English, but look at your results. When we type that in, do, 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 when it loads, again, uh, we have to translate this page translate to English yes okay we've got 98 related products which is hardly any but that's because we typed it in English so if you go to let's say uh, English to Chinese translation let's type in here sport water bottle here we have it in Chinese we just copy and paste that and we had 98 results now let's check it out when we do it in Chinese, we have 12,000, oh, 126,000 <laughs> results. So again, uh, a lot to navigate through. Now we just, you can click through here. You see a wide variety of different water bottles, wide variety of different prices, a lot to navigate, over 100,000 results. So let's say, for example, you see something you like, you click on that, you now have the price. And, well, there's a price range. Uh, price breakdown per size, again you have to translate the page and kind of like as I mentioned before, the specifications don't necessarily easily translate from Chinese into English and here we don't have an option to see any testing certificates, anything like that. Again, regarding the price, let's, we've got some lifestyle images, which is great. Um, Again, these are the specs and the features, but they're on the image, so you can't select it and copy and paste it and translate it. And then if you go down here, let's look at the price. It says, in general, underlined price. The underlined price may be the sales guide price of the product or the previously displayed sales price of the product. It is not the original price and is for reference only. So 
we're getting prices, but they aren't even actual, the actual price. Now we have to open up communication with a company that doesn't really speak any English. Um, so this, this, is the, this is the major challenge here. Why not just go and type this into Alibaba and watch my previous Alibaba video, how to find the direct manufacturers? Why are we making it so difficult for ourselves? So using this website is extremely frustrating. Uh, I don't even want to try and go through it in, in any more detail because it's just, me personally, I, I don't like it. Uh, so, but I just want to give you guys a quick visual uh, of what it looks like. And if you have had a good experience of this website, please let me know in the comments below and tell me that I'm wrong. That I, I would love to hear that if you guys know a better way to use this website. All right, take care. Thanks very much. And I'll chat to you soon. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that very, very quick screen share. And just to reiterate those top seven points, just to refresh and remind ourselves what they were. Uh, point number one was all about the language barrier and uh, not being able to speak uh, proper English to the manufacturers on 1688. Point number two was all about the quality standards being less than what we require uh, in the UK, Europe and the US. Uh, point number three was all about the export license as these manufacturers not having an export license. So we have to purchase through a middleman, a sourcing agent or a trading company. And point number four was all about the payments, um, now having to pay uh, a middleman, not getting payment protection, all that sort of stuff. Point number five was all about the relationships, um, that we don't get to build those relationships with the manufacturers. Point number six was not necessarily actually getting the cheapest price. And point number seven, point number seven, Point number seven was all about what is it that 1688 actually gives you that Alibaba doesn't. And guys, I just wanted to add, if you would like to work with me on a one-to-one -one basis, you can book a coaching session at the below link, uh, which is calendly.com forward slash sourcing with Kian. And that link will be in the description below as well, uh, as well as a bunch of other goodies for you guys. So if you want to work with me, we'd be more than happy to do so. It'd be a lot of fun uh, to hang out with you guys. And then also on social media, if you're on Facebook, please make sure you join our sourcing community, which is, I've got a group called Sourcing with Kian. And uh, there, just the community helps each other out. We post our questions, we all help each other. It's a really fun, lively community to be a part of, so definitely join us on Facebook. And if you're feeling a little bit more social, please connect with me personally on Instagram, where I am Kian underscore JG. And uh, send me a DM, shoot me a message, take a photo of this, post it to your story, I'll repost you, and we'll just connect each other that way, and it will be a lot of fun. So as I mentioned, if you are not familiar with Alibaba and want to best use that platform, please definitely check the next video, which is going to pop up right here in five, four, three, two, one, and I will see you there. All the best and take care.